Thanks for staying with us right here on Sunrise as we continue this morning. We're still talking to Jay Bagwan from the Water Commission, Commission Research. And on the line, we're now joined by Sputnik Ratao, who's a spokesperson from the Department of Water and Sanitation. Remember, you can be part of our conversation by giving us a call on 11 447 or 1620. And your comments are also welcome on our Facebook and Twitter pages. Uh, let's uh, take uh, talk to Mr. Ratao on the line, who's uh, down in Cape Town. Unfortunately, was supposed to be in our studio studio down there. Um, let's just uh, bring uh, our viewers uh, up to date, uh, Mr. Ratao, in terms of like uh, preparations to assist the people of Cape Town in comes, uh, when it comes to uh, day zero approaching. What are the plans uh, that your department has been working on with the Department of the Western, with the uh, Western Cape, uh, of course, the government? Um, thank you so much for the time. And um, well, there's a number of things that are in, in place, and, and some of them are already uh, beginning to to to, to, to 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 take place, if I may to put it that way. Part of the, the, the idea was to look at obviously the issue of um, groundwater, but groundwater abstraction cannot be looked at without ensuring as well that there is compliance with the amount of water that would be abstracted out of the ground because it is also not infinite mm. and therefore there is the, the the combination of the two issues to make sure that we access that groundwater but also to make sure that uh, there is sufficient monitoring of that groundwater abstraction to to keep in line with one the, uh, the water restrictions that are in place as well as uh, uh, you know ensuring that uh, uh, it, it is only the legally uh, authorized people that are able to actually do the abstraction. The second thing is to look at uh, the, the, the access to the Table Mountain Group Aquifer, where we're working together with the province and the city to see how we can be able to bring that water into, 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 into the, the, the supply. There is also the, the, the fast tracking of the augmentation system of the Perk River um, uh, fuel play dam uh, that, that, that would uh, in the ultimate be able to raise the capacity of fuel play dam and ensure that we can be able to have more water over a longer period. Whereas uh, in, the, in the nearest future, uh, looking at those very dam levels at Kiavata Stroke as, a, as well as uh, um, uh, uh, fuel play, when they reach a certain capacity, then we are going to be looking at what we call dredging of the canal in order to be able to access the, 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 the water that would otherwise have been unusable. But also, uh, looking at the, the, the experience of uh, uh, bringing into line uh, the desalination plant in Richard Bay, we are working together with Ungen Water and the city of Cape Town to uh, fast track the, the procurement processes in order to be able to actually bring in uh, the desalination plant that is planned for uh, the waterfront in as short a time as possible. And those uh, procurement processes are in line. Whereas in the month of December, we were able to finalize some of the water use license applications that the city has brought to the department in, in also, uh, uh, you know, uh, looking at them as top priority. Okay. All right. Of course, so we have uh, on the line, as uh, I've already mentioned, the spokesperson of the Department of uh, Water and Sanitation. Um, that's Mr. Ratao joining us on the line. All right. One of the biggest challenges, like uh, earlier on, we, we, we've got a, a caller who says they are out uh, in Cape Town. They feel that, uh, you know, as residents, they're made, uh, you know, to suffer when there is water coming out of the mountain and there's water in dams. Uh, why can't they just have access uh, to, to this water? In terms of communicating these messages uh, to ordinary uh, citizens out in Cape Town, what plans are there so that they can adhere uh, to all these uh, restrictions that are there that, that they have to follow on a daily basis? Okay, we, uh, we seem to be struggling uh, with that line. Um, Jay, in terms of like, I mean, there's a lot of scientific research that's out. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of like, uh, you know, policies and plans that are done. But it, it seems like for, for ordinary citizens, the message doesn't seem to be getting through. And you were talking about that earlier on about the be behavioral change that we need to see happening. Yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, 
I, I, in, in my own view, I, I think one of the uh, key solutions together with the technical interventions is uh, creating greater awareness mm. so that people don't manage the situation in fear. Mm. They actually become part of the solution. Mm. So I think from now till, till we get to a situation of security, uh, getting people involved with more information uh, or around what the options are, how they're going to be dealing with it, etc., mm. will build that confidence and build that accountability as well around how people contribute to managing this challenge with the officials and government, mm. you know, uh, that we overcome, we, we can overcome day zero. Mm. And I think uh, what Sputnik was highlighting is that uh, the kind of uh, immediate security to respond to day zero, you know, is going to uh, sort of bring in something like about 200 to 250 megaliters a day. Mm. Uh, that uh, means that uh, we will not have issues of famine or really completely dry situation. We will be able to supply people with drinking water and the basic amounts of water. Mm. All right, let me, t as, let me try and uh, reconnect with Sputnik on uh, the line. I don't know if you can hear me uh, clearly. Um, as, as we continue this morning now, government has been speaking also about relocating water for the past uh, 20 years. What does this mean and why has it, been t has it taken so long to, to implement that? The, the issue of uh, 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 water augmentation has been, has been part of the plan. And that is why I'm, I'm saying uh, part of what has the minister has, 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 has directed is that instead of uh, looking at those plans and still bringing them online years uh, from now, uh, she has directed that, that the work around uh, the fast tracking of the augmentation scheme of the Berg River fuel flay supply should be uh, uh, done as a matter of priority and immediacy. Mm. And that is why it, 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 is, it is some of uh, uh, those things that we have to look at. But also, we have to understand that uh, part of what we do is, is to plan beyond any, any point of drought or any point of uh, 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 a failure of, 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 a, of, of a system. And therefore, part of what we need to understand is, is that, is that uh, merit to all the planning, merit to all the work that we can do, merit to all of these things, the reality of the fact that over the last three to four years, the Western Cape has received on an ongoing basis less and less rainfall during its uh, rainfall season mm. is something that we have to look at and, and, and accept that we have received less and less rainfall over the time. Mm. So even if you have planned, but you have received much less than what you had planned for. And therefore, the issue of uh, 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 water conservation it, it becomes the first issue that we need to look at and becomes the most important thing that we must accept and get to do. Uh, uh, so that it can assist all the planning, it can assist all the, 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 the infrastructure development, it can assist as well all of the other plans uh, 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 or rather the cooperation that you can find between national province, province as well as local government. So, so uh, you know, just to uh, uh, reiterate or uh, highlight that the Department of Water Affairs uh, and the Water Research Commission is to plug it, mm. uh, for many years have been doing a lot of uh, awareness around water. So you could get on the website of the department, you could get on the website for the Water Research Commission. Mm. There's all sources of information. We've also managed to uh, build curriculum around water at different uh, uh, grade levels, etc. that mm. has been introduced into schools. So information is available, it's accessible, it is out there. Uh, we need to get uh, the other departments of education, of Department of Health, etc., to become part of the solution as well and, and make this an inclusive process that it's, it's, a, it's a high priority. All right, let's, uh, let's get uh, uh, Sputnik's final thoughts uh, who is uh, on the line. Day zero is approaching uh, for the people of Cape Town, but uh, the water situation is a problem for the rest of the country. So wh what next? What, what do we need to, to understand? 
I think it, what we need to understand is that South, uh, South Africa uh, uh, will uh, uh, always be part of those countries that we call water scarce. Mm. We will continue to receive less and less rainfall over time because of climate change, because we are receiving ordinarily uh, less than world average rainfall. Mm. And therefore, the issue of water conservation must be a behavioral kind of uh, change that happens to the benefit of everybody. It should not be looked upon as a punitive measure, but uh, those uh, water restrictions, when they are put in place, they must be understood to assist uh, all of us to be able to consume less so that we can be able to make sure that we, 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 we have sufficient for the future. Okay, well, we're going to have to leave it at that. Thanks very much uh, for uh, joining us uh, this uh, morning. Uh, there you have it. Uh, it is a crisis, not just uh, for Cape Town. So let's not sit here and say Cape Town's got a problem. Uh, we actually all have uh, a problem uh, from what uh, has come through in our conversation this morning. Thanks uh, to our, our guests for this morning. Uh, Jay Bermond okay. from uh, the Water Research Commission. And in Cape Town, uh, we were talking to Sputnik Ratao from the Department of Water and Sanitation. Do stay with us at Sunrise Lab, right, Janine?